So forces, this is stuff uh, you already know, you should know, hopefully, and Newton's laws. How many of Newton's laws are there? So on a multiple choice test, when I say, what does this apply, apply to, and I say Newton's first law, Newton's second law, Newton's third law, or Newton's fourth law, which one will you never pick? Law. Great. All right. As we know, a force is a push or a pull. It can be a natural force or it can be a contact force, like I push on your desk. I have to touch your desk to do that. That is a contact force. Natural forces like gravity, the earth is pulling on me. Is the earth actually touching me right now? Not right now. Not, not technically the ground. What's another natural force where things Wind. don't actually have to touch, but you can feel the pull? Wind. Magnets. Good. Well, the air would actually like okay. actually be touching you. So, so we're basically magnets getting pulled down to the earth. So. All right. Universal gravitation is a natural force of attraction between anything, not just us and the Earth, but any two objects, me and that water bottle. That water bottle is pulling on me right now, and I am pulling on it. Now, how does my mass and the water bottle's mass compare to the whole Earth? Very, very little. Technically, there is a pull between us, but at the same time, I'm pulling on that water bottle. Blake's also pulling it towards her. Jordan's pulling it towards her. It's being pulled in like every different direction. Not to mention the friction between the bottle and the table is strong enough to keep it there anyway. But technically, there is a pull between any two objects. If me and that water bottle went out in deep space, imaginary place where there's no planets, no stars, no nothing, and I put me in the water bottle, somehow. What will happen to me in the water bottle? We will pull towards each other. Will we meet in the middle? No. Where will we meet closer to? Me. We will not use this equation, but just so you know it, um, the force between any two objects is, of course, the mass of like me times the mass of the stapler, the pencil sharpener, whatever, divided by the distance between us squared but also times this constant and 10 to the negative 11. What kind of number is that? Really, really, really small. So for there to be any force at all that is noticeable, you're going to need some huge masses, which is why, of course, we can notice gravity between like us and the Earth or the Earth and the Moon. So the strength of gravity between depends on what? What two things are in this formula? How close those objects are. Think about astronauts leaving the Earth. What happens to the pull on them as they get farther and farther away from the Earth? It's less. As the distance increases, the force would decrease. All right, and here is the best video clip of the year. Peter, I think maybe you're in denial about this fat thing. Oh, yeah? Well, I challenge you to prove to me that I'm fat. Uh, okay, hang on. See this? Yeah. You know what it is? Uh, duh, it's an apple. Good, good, good. All right, watch this. What the hell? What is this? What is this, some kind of gag? Uh, no, that's orbit. Huh? You have your own gravitational pull. Oh, that's a bunch of crap. Now back to the Three Stooges. Here, let's see in space. When you go to the bathroom on Earth, you're relying on gravity. Pretty, pretty heavily. Imagine if you were halfway done and somebody shut off gravity, it would be a mess. And you'd float off the toilet. So, so when, we, when we designed our space toilet, First, it has to have a seat belt on it to hold you down. And then we decided to separate solids and liquids because they're easier to store that way. So we just have a tube that you pee into, and it has air pulled into the tube. So it's not a big deal. For the women, there's a cup fits up against them. For the guys, it's just like a little funnel. You just pee into this tube, and it goes into a, into a sewage tank. But 
The solids that come out of your body, that's a harder problem to solve. And it's an important medical one, because on Earth, everything falls on the floor. But in space, it's going to float around. <laughs> so so it, it'll really make you sick. If you re-ingest something that came out of your body, it will really make you sick. And we can't afford to get that sick. So we designed a toilet that instead of gravity pulling everything into the toilet, it has air flow. There's air pulled down into the toilet. Sort of windy when you're sitting there, but it pulls everything out of your body. Everything that comes out of your body gets pulled down into the toilet by the air. And then in the storage tank, we just expose that to the vacuum of space. So it basically just freeze dries everything. So it kills all the bacteria so that there's no smell. And then that, that, we just store it. And then when you have a whole bunch of it stored, we put it in a little unmanned supply ship, and we undock it, and it burns up in the atmosphere. So the next time you see a beautiful shooting star going across the sky, <laughs> that's what it might be. <clears throat> okay, also, um, if something is in space, astronauts in space, whatever, please don't say there's no gravity there. There always is gravity, so long as there's you, or an astronaut, and any other object, the Earth, the Moon, somewhere, the Sun, there is gravity. That astronaut's being pulled in all those different directions, of course, the closest, biggest mass is going to win out. But it's not that there's no gravity in space, it's just so much smaller than if you were actually on Earth. Okay, uh, weight. How do we calculate our weight? Your weight's obviously based on your mass, which is which the base unit is in grams, um, but for this formula it needs to be in kilograms, and I will give it to you in kilograms. And it's also, of course, based on gravity. So if you go to the moon, do you weigh more or less? Less, because gravity is less. Do you have more or less mass? Same. Same. Theoretically, all the atoms and molecules that make you up are still there if you're on the moon. You didn't lose an arm on the trip to the moon, hopefully. Um, now, our unit for weight is not going to be pounds, not in the metric system, but newtons. After, of course, Sir Isaac Newton. And that's just the unit of force. So really easy to calculate weight. You just need to know the object's mass and multiply it by gravity. And we know gravity, or we can look it up on the wall. What is gravity on Earth? 9.81 .81 meters per second squared. OK. Newton's laws. Law number one, an object at rest will stay at rest. An object in motion will stay in motion unless acted upon by an outside force. And this is called the law of inertia. For example, your mom leaves her coffee cup on the roof of the car, speeds off, taking you to school, forgets about the coffee cup. What happens to the coffee cup? It sits there and the car flies out from underneath it. The object at rest will stay at rest unless acted upon by an outside force. Now, if your mom goes slow enough, what force might make the coffee cup start to move along with the car? The air. That would, that would probably hurt, because that would be pushing it the other way. Um, friction. You said friction. That would help. If the rooftop were real icy, of course, you can picture it sliding off. But if, the, if it goes slow enough and there's friction, it might stay for a little while. Yeah? Um, if you were in a car, and there's like a fly in the car, and you were driving, would the fly be going that Fast or like, how does that work? No. Like, is it, if you're going 50 miles an hour in a car and you got to fly there, is the, is the fly going 50 miles an hour? Um, no. The fly would be flying relative to the air around it. Relative to the air around it, the fly thinks it's in a still car. It thinks everything in the car is still because all the air is moving at 50 miles an hour, so it's also moving at 50 miles an hour. So, no, we would not say the fly can fly at 50 miles an hour. If you're in an airplane, you like, you're going, and then you jump up, but you like scoot back a little bit? Okay, that's a, those are good questions. All right, classic physics question. 
I kidnap you, I beat you up real bad, I blindfold you, I drag you onto this train, paint all the windows black, and the train's like magnetic train, so you, it's kind of like levitating off the tracks, can't even feel any bumps. And then you wake up in the middle of this pitch black train. How can you tell if you are moving or not? You can't. Let's say you have a ball and you throw the ball up in the air. If you're moving, where are you going to catch it? Exactly. You can't feel constant velocity. You can feel acceleration. You can feel speeding up and slowing down. So even if you try to play catch with the ball, it's still going to come right back in your palm. So even if you're moving, the ball would be moving with you. You wouldn't be able to tell. Good question. You can't actually tell constant velocity. Now, there's bumps along the road. Of course, you can feel that. But you can feel speeding up and slowing down. OK, and what would happen? You toss the ball up. Your dad floors it. What's going to happen to the ball? Are you going to catch it in your hand? I don't know. said constant velocity. You're going to go back. Yeah, you're going to go back. Is the ball going to land? Okay, the ball's not going to land in the hand. Is it going to land in front of your hand or behind your hand if you're going forward and your dad accelerates? Yeah, you're now gaining speed that the ball is not gaining. That's why if you put a like, penny on your knee at those drop zone places, it stays in the air. Yeah. What? You're drop. You're not allowed to anymore. Yeah, like, those free fall rides at the amusement parks? They yeah. stay in the air because you're dropping faster than the coin will. So you can watch it. Yeah. Yeah, I've yeah. skated off the one before. Okay. Let's move on here. It's only law number one. The law of inertia. It was, you know, essentially objects will keep doing what they're already doing unless there's a force to stop it. For a long time, people thought natural motion was rest. That's not true. Uh, natural motion could be constant velocity. There's, there's almost inevitably a force to slow something down. Like think about a bowling alley. Pretty famous. You know, if you had an infinitely long bowling alley, would the ball ever stop once you let it go? If you say yes, why? Because of the friction, okay, it's, it's not frictionless, and also air resistance, those will be your outside forces. But if you get rid of them, you know, theoretically it would go forever. And you disappeared simultaneously <laughs> because you are a force pulling back on it. If you throw a bowling ball in space, Okay, yeah, it's going to move away from you. But over enough time, what would happen? Yeah, it would. You, you guys are pulling on each other, so it would slow down, stop, and you guys would meet. Kind of. That would not work in space. You can do that, but you're not going to go anywhere. You throw your boot in the opposite direction. Let's get to Newton's third law for that answer. OK, good questions. Um, a definition, though, that is kind of separate from the law. I mean, it's the same thing. But the definition of just inertia means resistance to change in motion. And that depends only on mass. So what has more inertia, a mouse or an elephant? I mean, if they're both going 50 miles an hour, which one's going to be harder to change? The elephant, that's it. Or if they're both stopped, which one would be harder to get going? The elephant, based only on mass. Inertia is based only on mass. OK, second law is really our formula. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. Uh, F equals MA. What do you think F stands for? Force. Force, M, mass, and A, acceleration. So this basically just says, and you can look at the formula, net force is proportional to uh, the object's mass and acceleration. The greater the force, clearly the greater the acceleration. 
the harder I push on something, the more it's going to accelerate. Now, we do use the term net force. Net force is the sum of all forces, but it takes into account their direction, which brings up one of our um, final topics for the unit, which is vectors. But I bet you can figure these out. What is the net force on this box? Let's say two people are pulling. One's pulling five newtons to the left. What's the total force, but consider the directions? Zero. Good. Nothing. Don't say ten. You're just going opposite ways. How about here? What's the net force? Which way? Good. And we need to be specific with vectors. We always need to give a direction. How about all of this? What's the net? One, one, two, two, up. Very good. And the last one. Zero. Good. A lot of forces, but the net is nothing. So, knowing that a force is related to an acceleration, which box will accelerate the most? Good, that one. And which boxes won't accelerate? Not, not saying they won't move, but they won't accelerate. The zero ones. So just because forces act on something doesn't mean it has to accelerate. It can move, but it won't necessarily accelerate if the net force is zero. All right, and our last law, I think the easiest one is simply action-reaction. <coughs> We're stopping at momentum. Three. Three in a picture. Including this one. Well, not including this one. All right, new third law. For every action, for every force, there's an equal and opposite force. When we say that, we must be considering two objects. It could be me and the earth. The earth is pulling on me. What am I doing to the earth? Pulling on it. Pulling on it. Not very much, but I am. Well, what that like so many people pull on it? Or... No, <laughs> um, all right, playing baseball, a bat exerts a force on the ball. The ball exerts a force on the bat. Your weight pushes down on the floor, the floor pushes back on you. Think of the two objects involved. All right. Newton built on the work of Galileo and Kepler and came to the conclusion that the motion of falling bodies, the movement of planets, and in fact the movement of any object at any time was due to being acted upon by a force, a push or a pull. He worked out what he called the three laws of motion, which govern the movement of all objects at all times and in all circumstances. The first law states that an object's natural tendency is to continue what it is doing. If it is moving in a straight line at a constant speed, it will continue in a straight line unless acted upon by another force. It also states that an object at rest will remain at rest unless a force moves it. This is known as the principle of inertia. There are many examples of the first law. The space probe Pioneer 10 has been drifting through space for 35 years. A hockey puck sliding on the ice will keep on going. And this steel pipe won't move until the claw does its job. T minus 10 seconds. Nine, eight, seven. Go from eight inches, start at six, five, four. An object's mass is a measure of its inertia. The greater the mass of an object, like the shuttle, the harder it is to move it or change its direction. Note that physicists use the term mass, or the total quantity of its matter, rather than weight, 
because in space, all objects are weightless, but they never lose their mass. The second law describes how an object accelerates or changes direction when a force is applied to it. The change depends on the magnitude of the net force. The second law also states that the acceleration due to a given force is always in the direction of the force. The mass of the object is also important. The larger the mass, the greater the force needed to make it accelerate or change direction. The second law can be written as F equals MA. This formula is saying that applied force, or F, equals mass times acceleration, MA. This formula is used to describe the motion of objects under all kinds of circumstances. If a ball is thrown horizontally, it will continue forever unless a force acts on it. The Earth's gravity is a force that pulls on the ball and it falls to Earth in the direction it is traveling. Newton's third law of motion deals with interacting forces. It states that for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. The opposing forces of these two tug-of-war teams balance each other. The swimmer pushes off from the floating raft, propelling his body away from the raft, but also pushing the raft backwards. As the law states, for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. A book sitting on a table remains where it sits because the table pushes back with a force equal to the book's weight. This seems like a simple-minded idea, but an architect or engineer designing a building had better understand the third law of motion and ensure there is enough support to carry the weight or the building will fall down. In the building of bridges, or any complicated structure where weight must be distributed, the calculation of net force is vital because it shows where the stress will be concentrated. This is calculated through vector analysis. Okay, so now I want you to pick, and these are similar to some test questions you will see. So A, you have to know what Newton's laws are. B, you've got to know what number each one is. And then you've got to be able to apply it correctly. Now, I do realize that you could be creative and say this could be any of Newton's laws. But it should be kind of aiming one direction here. So a baseball player hits a softball and a baseball with the same force. The baseball has the greatest acceleration. Good. OK, perfect. We're comparing masses. We mentioned the word force. And we're talking about acceleration. So which law incorporates all that? That is the formula law, F equals MA. And that law is what you need for your homework, F equals MA. We got homework. Yeah, the force problems. All right, bus driver continues moving down the highway at 50 miles per hour until he applies the brakes. I would say this is going for number one. This is the object in motion will stay in motion unless there's a force to change it. So that's the law of inertia, which you also need to know is number one. OK, a couple more. A baseball pitcher throws a baseball. The pitcher applies a force on the ball. And the ball also applies a force back on the pitcher's arm. Good, that's an action reaction. So that's the third. Number four, maybe this happens at your house. A dirty dish left on the table is still there in the morning. Good. Object at rest will stay at rest. There was no force to move it. Still going to be there. Five, a skier hits a bump in a mountain and loses a ski, but the ski continues down the mountain. Second. First. 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 I like first best here. 
As an object in motion, stays in motion. There was no force to stop the ski, so the ski kept on going. All right, that's it. Um, six, a baseball player hits two baseballs. The first baseball he bunted, and the second he swung away. The second baseball had the greatest acceleration. Yeah, a little tricky with the second. Forever, if you're ever trying to figure out if one's a second, are we comparing forces, masses, and accelerations? Where one's always the same. So we got two different forces. If he's bunting and swinging away, um, and then obviously two different accelerations. How does force affect acceleration? That's going to be the second law. All right, and number seven, a kayaker is paddling down a river. His paddle exerts a force on the water, and the water exerts a force on the paddle. Perfect. All right, before you pack up, I'm going to put the formulas you need for your homework on the packet. You might want to write that down real quick. You have eight minutes. I think you could do it.